Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about translating from English to symbolic logic. So, you know, there's a couple of reasons you might want to do this. Um, for one, sometimes when we're working with words, it's very easy to get tangled up in the meaning and it gets even more challenging to find a negation or an equivalent statement because words can sometimes distract us. If we can get ourselves into symbolic logic, then we can use pre-established rules and theorems um, to deduce what is actually true without getting distracted by the meaning. The other thing is, is that, you know, if we're working in computer science or, uh, you know, cybersecurity, information technology, all sorts of these techie fields where we need to talk to the computer, make the commuter do things um, based on whether a certain condition is true or false, when we talk to the computer, the computer is going to understand code. It's going to understand symbols and notation, and we need to be able to talk to the computer in a way that the computer understands. Um, and when we code up our algorithms, we need to be able to use symbolic logic um, in those cases. So let's get right to it. The first thing I'm going to do is give you some of the tools that we'll need. So our symbols, I'm going to write down the word and uh, the symbols. So let's see, here's our symbols, our notation we're going to use, um, and here's the, the meaning. So the first symbol we're going to see looks like an upside down V. And this means and. And you know, when I see that symbol, it almost looks like an A. So that's how I remember that's and. The next symbol is the opposite. It is actually a V looking shape. And this is the symbol for or. And I don't have a cute way to remember that one. I just remember the and and then the other one is the or. Next, we're going to look at an arrow. This is an arrow pointing to the right, and it's only got one. Um, it's not a double arrow or anything like that. It's just got one uh, arrow on it. And this is our symbol for a conditional statement. I'm going to write down conditional, uh, but you'll usually see this written as an if-then statement. So I'm just going to write if-then and we'll see an example of that in a minute. Now, the double arrow means a conditional in both ways. So this is a biconditional. It's like an if then statement going both ways and we call this if and only if. And I'll show you an example of that in a moment. And the last symbol you'll see, uh, in our textbook, we, we see this kind of angled symbol. Sometimes you'll also see um, a little squiggly line like a tilde. And both of those symbols there, those mean not. That's a negation. So I'd like to take a look at four examples. I've got the first two examples up here now, uh, and then we'll work on the other ones. So um, our goal here is to translate the sentence in English to symbolic logic. And if you speak another language like Spanish or Italian or French, um, it really is like those exercises where you're translating from one language to another. So I'm going to scan through all these words and I'm going to start to look for things that I know and love. So I'm going to go through here and start to look for my connectors. I'm going to look for and, or, if, then, not. I'm going to look for all those key phrases. So I'm scanning through blah, 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 and, okay? So that's something I know and love. And I know that symbol right there is going to be that upside down V shape. It looks like a, a letter A without the little bar in it. So what that tells me is that I've got a conjunction. I've got an and statement. And 
Furthermore, I've got some information before the and and some information that comes after. And I need to give that some symbolic representation. So the first phrase here is the girl is wearing red. So let's use R to represent that statement. So I've got R and now I've got another phrase here, holding a book. So the girl is holding a book. I could call that B for book. So if I wanted to be very explicit about what I'm doing, I could say the letter capital R represents the girl is wearing red. And B is going to be the girl is holding a book. And so my answer, my translation for the sentence would be R and B. There's my final answer. Okay. Let's do another one. So for number two, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to go through here scanning for my connectors. I'm going to scan through the things I know and love. I'm looking for the ands, the ors, the if thens, biconditionals, things like that. So right away I see if. Ooh. That's something I know and love if, do, 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 keep going then. So I've got an if then statement. So that tells me that I need some symbol for I'm tired. My if then statement is going to be represented by this little arrow. And then I need another symbol for I'll take a nap. So for I'm tired, I could call that T. I'll take a nap. I could call that N. You can choose other letters as well, as long as you tell the reader what you're up to. So I'm going to let everybody know that T stands for I'm tired. I'm going to let N stands for I'm taking a nap. And so my answer here is going to be T implies N. If T, then N. Okay, let's take a look at two more examples. You may want to pause the video here and then come back and see how you did. I'm going to do the same approach for both of these problems. So for number three, I'm going to scan through looking for those keywords, blah, 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 blah. If and only if, I know what that is. That's my biconditional. That's a double-ended arrow. And so I need some sort of symbol for I lose weight, and I also need a symbol for I'm in a caloric deficit. To save a little space here, I will just write W so you know I'm looking at that, and C for I'm in a caloric deficit. So my answer here would be W if and only if C. And again, you could spell out what W represents and what C represents. Now, number four is uh, not hard, but it is one that can sometimes be distracting and we can get confused with the words. So let's be very careful about what we do. Again, I'm going to go through and I'm looking for all those special words. So the first thing I'm looking at here is the and statement. But notice I've also got the not and I've also got another not statement there. Now, I'm going to need a symbol for it's raining. I'll call that R. And I'm going to need a symbol for cold. So I'll call that C. So it looks like my answer would be not R and not C. And that is the correct answer. What this statement is saying is it's not raining. That's definitely true. And also it's the case that it's not cold. Okay, so this would be a day I absolutely love. Uh, I'd go out for a nice long walk. Um, but let's contrast that with a different statement. Which says, it's not the case that 
it's both raining and cold. And this is a very different situation. So in this case, we're saying it's not the case that it's both raining and cold. So here, what we have is not parentheses R and C. It might be raining but not cold, or it might be cold but it's just not raining. It's it, This last statement here is saying it's not both of those things. It might be one of them, but it's not the case that it's both. So those two statements are very different, um, and we will see in a future video that they are indeed not the same. So this is why I say it's good to work in symbolic logic because sometimes if you're looking at the words, you know, our human brain <laughs> kind of gets attached to the meaning and we can get uh, very distracted from what's really happening behind the scenes.